Good morning, everybody. So today we have Pedro Boabida de Brito, who's coming from where coming from, yeah. who has a position at the University of Lisboa, <laughs> and is going to give a talk on the Galois symmetries of the knot spaces. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I, first, I should uh, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, Bruno, Joana, and Joachim, for giving me the chance to talk here about this. So. The, the title of, the, of my talk is, is the same as a paper that I uh, wrote with Geoffroy, um, uh, Geoffroy Aurel, who's in Paris. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Pedro, could you mute your tablet? Because um, in the speaker view, it shows us your tablet and maybe if you mute it, ah, and then you have to unmute yourself in the computer if it's possible. Ah, okay, uh, let me see. Wait a second. I mute my. And now you need to unmute in the computer. Yeah. Ah, exactly. Is it better? Yeah. I just have an echo. Ah, that's true. But then we see you. I don't know, Bruno. You're the chair. Then you. <laughs> yeah. We don't hear you, Bruno. So sorry. Yes, for me the sound is perfect. So what is the what's the issue with you, Joanna? No, um, if he's uh, speaking through the tablet, then we don't see his image. Even in the recording, we, we will only see a black uh, screen. That's fine. It's OK. Well, yeah, the thing is, if I have it like this, it's, it's um, echoing. OK, then switch to the other. OK. Do what is best for you. I, I think we yeah. see what is on your tablet, and that's perfect for me, so. Uh. So it, it, was, it was great at the beginning. So you can go back to the original setting. It, like this? You can Perfect. hear me? Perfect. Yeah, OK. Yeah, the words I think it's too confusing. Um, OK, so let me try to open this again. It's, ah, OK. Right. Um, so uh, right, so so are we talking about uh, um, trend work with Geoffroy Aurel, who's in Paris. Uh, and um, so the, um, so I'll start slowly with, um, with uh, some uh, notions from, from knot theory. Um, and these are certain invariants of knots called uh, Vassiliev invariants. So I'll, I'll denote K the space of, of long knots, uh, D1 and D3. Uh, which are standard near the boundary. So they are, they just, they look like near the boundary, they, they just look like the standard inclusion. And then in the middle, they can do uh, whatever uh, they like, as long as they're embedding. So they're, they're injective. Uh, and the isotopy classes of such long knots, they, uh, they can be, uh, the knots can be concatenated. Uh, so the isotopy classes form a monoid. Uh, and it's it's actually an abelian monoid because you can sort of slide one knot through the other one, um, uh, and this is this is well defined up to isotopy uh, and defines a, a abelian monoid structure on the isotopy classes. Um, and in in knot theory, people study knot invariants. So so here's a definition of some a special kind of knot invariant. So if you take an abelian group A, uh, uh, a knot invariant. Uh, for, uh, for this talk would just be a, would, will just be a monoid, mon, uh, monoid map from the isotopy classes of uh, the, the knot space uh, to, uh, to that abelian group. Uh, and we say it's of degree n uh, or Vassiliev uh, invariant of degree n uh, if its extension to the monoid of singular knots uh, satisfies this, this equation. Um, so by a singular knot, I just mean a knot uh, that has that can have double points, can have certain double points, so something like this. Uh, that's that's a double point. It only has double points, so it's an immersion um, um, with a finite number of double points, uh, and and so so we say it's of degree n if whenever you evaluate it on a knot which has n plus one. Uh, double points or more, then then this invariant takes value zero. 
Okay, uh, and I didn't tell you what this extension is. So this extension is uh, is defined um, via the so-called Skane relation. Uh, so if f is your uh, is the singular knot, uh, and it's a, and say you take a you look at the double point. Um, so. So you look at the double point in your uh, in your singular knot. So this is hard to write like this. Um, then you can resolve this double point in two ways, right? You can you can resolve it like this, uh, or you can resolve it the other way, like this. Um, and uh, so the knot that you get by resolving one way, say this one, you call it f plus. And the other one, uh, you call it f minus, uh, and you just in, you just evaluate the, your your original val in, invariant on each of these, uh, and then you take their difference. Um, so so in general, if you take any singular knot, uh, you can resolve it. You can look at all the double points it has. Say it has I don't know n double points, uh, and you can resolve all these n double points in in two possible ways. So you get uh, two to the n um, non-singular knots uh, and for each of those you 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 have an element in your in your abelian group uh, and then you just take you just take their sums with there will be a plus or a minus depending on uh, uh, the ways that you've resolved the knots okay um, so uh, in degree zero and one there there's there are not many uh, for example, in degree zero, in, uh, in degree zero, you would be looking at invariants um, whose extension to a singular knot with uh, with one double point or, or more is uh, is zero. Uh, and saying that the extension to one double point is zero, it's saying that if you do a crossing change, you're not changing the the value of the invariant. So you can you can change any knot to the n knot by doing crossing changes, and you won't be Changing the value of the invariant, so the the invariant is determined by the value on the knot, which has to be the neutral element, right? Because it's a monoid map. Uh, and uh, in degree one, you can also check it's a it's a little exercise. Um, uh, in degree two, there is there are already non-trivial uh, invariants, uh, and it, you can see that you can you can show that they're essentially uh, determined by by the value they take on the on the trefoil knot. Um, so uh, this wasn't really the way that uh, Vasiliev defined this invariant. Uh, he defined uh, uh, it, you know, he defined it in the sort of more general way using using trying to understand uh, how how the space of knots uh, sits inside the space of all maps from from uh, d one to d three and then. Building a stratification, building a spectral sequence, and uh, and this this description of the of the of these invariants they they come from, they are due to Berman and Lin and they they sort of made made, made the, the this little part of the spectral sequence combinatorial, uh, and they also show that uh, they're actually non-trivial invariants of any degree, which wasn't uh, really clear from the original definition. Uh, um, so they are there are quite a lot of them, uh, and in particular, they all the all the sort of non polynomial knot invariants that uh, people studied, uh, all the quantum invariants. They 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 up to some the the coefficients of these polynomials after after maybe some substitution they are um, Vasiliev invariants. Okay, so um, I want to relate first this, uh, explain how this um, uh, Vasiliev invariants are related to some um, some algebraic description. Uh, this is um, uh, sort of old. So a n is the the z module of of n chord diagrams, uh, chord diagrams with with n chords. So it's the it's the the free z module generated by chord diagrams. Chord diagrams are uh, they are essentially chords on the, on a, on a line. So you have a line which rep which represents the the knot, uh, and then you have certain chords. So there are segments like this, uh, which are connected to 
to this line. So this is, for example, a chord diagram with two chords, okay, where you can have as many chords as you want. Um, so it's freely generated by these, and then there are some relations, uh, which I, I will not really need to spell out, but there's uh, two relations on these chords. And there is a, you have a map, if you're trying to classify the um, Vassili invariants, um, you can try to look at the following map. So if you take a Vassiliev invariant of degree uh, of degree n, uh, so uh, mu, uh, I want to produce an element in the dual um, the dual uh, module of uh, the algebra of chord diagrams, uh, the module of chord diagrams. So this just means the z linear maps. Um, so what I can do is, given my my invariant uh, and given a chord diagram D, um, I can I can I can pick a knot which represents uh, this chord diagram. Well, this will be a singular knot uh, with n double points. Uh, let me call it K. Okay. Which represents this chord diagram, meaning just that you know the the, the chord diagram records the the relative um, positions of where the points where where there is an intersection, where there is a double point. So you just you just take any knot which 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 has that sort of scheme of double point interactions, uh, and and then you evaluate, and then you evaluate your um, your invariant on that knot, that knot K. And that gives you that gives you an element in in uh, uh, that that gives you a number because we're talking about the value uh, invariants. Okay, so um, the first thing is it might not be clear why this is actually well defined because you've uh, you've there are a lot of nodes that might have that singular that that, that chord diagram that underlying chord diagram, uh, but you you can see that if you try to move from if you take two such nodes and you try to move from one to the other. Um, you will be introducing, uh, probably you will be introducing uh, new double points. Uh, and because we're looking at the Vassili invariant of degree n, those do, those, when you introduce those double points, you'll have more than n uh, double points. So the invariant is zero there. So you can sort of move from one to the other. Um, the value of the invariant doesn't depend on the choice of, of not. Uh, okay, so you have a map like this. Um, and um, so let me make a definition. So we say that two nodes, F and G are two nodes, they are an equivalent if their value uh, is the same for any degree and invariant mu. Uh, and there's a theorem of Gosarov which says that the, if you take the, the, the relation, if you take the equivalence classes, this is forms a finitely generated abelian group. Uh, and you can look at the map that we just looked at, uh, uh, constructed above and you can take this dual uh, and that gives you a map from from the module of chord diagrams uh, to the kernel of um, to this kernel like this. So the, and and this is useful. You can think of a um, a Vassili invariant of degree of degree n uh, just as a map, just as, just as a as a, um, um, a group a group homomorphism from this group of n equivalence classes to 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 Z or to a Billion group or to anything you want. Okay, so uh, so this here's the map again. Um, Excuse me, may I ask a question? Yes, of course. What is the connection between these Vassiliev invariants and Vassiliev invariants for usual uh, nodes on the sphere? On the on the circle. I mean, mean, on the yeah. Yeah. No, on the on the sphere. I mean, on S three, compact knots. Ah, uh, well, I think they should be very much the same. Yes, uh, I mean the algebra of chord diagrams looks a little different because, well, the the chords are uh, the the chords are uh, closed, right? Um, exactly. But uh, these these actually these these two modules are are isomorphic. Oh, okay. Uh, by closing, you can you can show that they're the same. Mm -hmm. Um, which is also which is coherent with the fact that uh, if you take isotopy classes of long knots or you take isotopy classes of of usual knots, they are these these two things are are the same. Uh, you can take them in R three or in S three. The the 
isotopic classes are the same. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, right, so this is the map that we just looked at um, from the module of core diagrams to the to this kernel. Uh, and um, sort of the big, one, the big theorem about this uh, is uh, due to uh, Konsevich. Um, and there is another, there is another sort of um, uh, way to, to go about it by due to both types, uh, which says that there is a universal uh, invariant of degree n over the complex numbers. So, um, so this is a, this is a not invariant, right? Which takes all, uh, values in in uh, uh, this this the, this vector space, the C vector space of of core diagrams, okay? And it's universal in the sense that uh, if you take any other if you take any other invariant with values in the complex numbers, it will factor through it will factor through this one, um, um, or equivalently. It, or equivalently, another way to say this is that the map, this map here upstairs that we constructed, is an isomorphism uh, once you tensor everything with Q, with the uh, with C, or, or with Q. Okay, so with C and and with Q. Um, uh, and so, in particular, uh, because these maps are, uh, are isomorphisms, uh, you get the splitting like this. Right. So you so you get the 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 a splitting of the n equivalence classes as uh, these direct sum of the uh, algebras of chord diagrams. Uh, so this is a sort of, this is a complete classification of, of polynomial invariants uh, over the rational numbers. Uh, they're, they're sort of encoded by this algebra of chord diagrams. Um, so the, 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 there are two difficult questions here. Uh, the first one is, um, the first one is whether they, these Van Seele invariants are actually, they distinguish all nodes, whether they are complete uh, invariants, whether they're really as good as they can be. Uh, and well, they seem to be very good by this, the, by the fact that they are as strong as all these quantum invariants, but we don't know if they're really, uh, they distinguish everything. Uh, and the other uh, question is whether we can define uh, and, and and prove that there is a universal invariant which is defined over the integers, uh, or let's say over the 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 p local integers, uh, the localization of integers at p for for a prime p. Okay, so um, so this talk will be a little bit about some ideas of on uh, the the second point. Uh, and I have to tell you a little bit about embedding calculus, um, which is due to good will and vice. So this is a very different, it comes from, a, from sort of algebraic topology is very, it's quite different uh, in, in the way it comes about. So, so here we have a tower of spaces. So K again is the, the space of knots and you have this tower uh, and the nth space in this tower um, is given as this uh, homotopy limit. So uh, ON is the, the post set of open subsets of the, the interval, D1, uh, which are just essentially a collection of open intervals and together with the color of, of the boundary. Um, right, so at most N. Ah, yes, maybe I should say, sorry, before I go on. So, um, right, so this is, you can, if you take, if you, you have a map. So if you take a knot, right, if you take a knot uh, and you take one such uh, interval, one such U, one such open set, you can just evaluate your knot on this open subset, right? Uh, and uh, of course, this will be, uh, this will be, um, uh, functorial with respect to inclusions because it's just evaluation. Uh, so this is how this diagram comes about. You take a knot and then you evaluate the knot on all these little fine open subsets of the interval. Uh, and then you take the limit of this or you rather the homotopy limit. Um, and that's what the space is. So it, it approximates the knot on sort of very small thickenings of, of uh, points in the interval up to, up to n points. 
Uh, and also note that if you take if you take one such um, open set U, which consists of a color and n intervals inside, uh, then the the space of embeddings of U in D three, it's really just the space of frame configurations of L points in R three. So you can sort of make this intervals very very small. So you can look at their centers and together with their derivatives. So that gives you a configuration space that gives you a configuration. So that's just a, just an injection. Uh, and it gives you a bunch of vectors, right? So it, it gives you a bunch of points in, in S2. Um, so these spaces are sort of, well, we would hope that they're easier to understand. Uh, they're, they involve configuration spaces, uh, things that we understand to a degree. Uh, and the other thing is if you take the first, if you, if you, take, if you take the first one, the first approximation, um, then, then all these spaces here, all these spaces in this diagram are essentially um, um, just one, it's, well, it's either one sphere if, if you take, uh, if you take an open set consisting of a single interval or a point if you just take the color. Right, because on the color uh, everything is fixed. So, so this diagram looks very simple. It has a sphere and it has a point. Uh, and if you take this homotopy limit, you you get the loop space on on the sphere, on the two sphere. Um, and and actually and actually the what the map does is just takes the derivative. So if you take you take the knot, you take a point, you take a point in the loop, which is just time. Uh, t and you take the derivative of your knot at that time t uh, and you sort of normalize so you, you take you get a you get a, a point in s2 okay so that's just taking the derivative and as you go higher you you are sort of um, picking out more and more of the what the knot does on many points um so for the case of knots um, this tower has been studied quite a lot um, and there is a there is a theorem um, which I will formulate it this way, and it was sort of there were various improvements on uh, the, this theorem. Uh, by so the, the the original versions were for were were for um, uh, the just the limit of the tower. Um, the, so the wire Hess and and um, and then Turchin and Bunnikon and. Koshevsina and uh, me and Michael Weiss. Uh, so we proved that uh, the these isotopic classes form a finitely generated abelian group. Um, and the, the, the map, this evaluation map, uh, is a monoid map. So it respects the uh, concatenation of knots. Okay. Um, the second uh, important uh, theorem connected to 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 connect to Vasiliev invariance is that the map, the evaluation map, to the n plus one uh, part in the tower is a degree is a Vasiliev invariant of of degree n. Okay, uh, so this is due to uh, Budni, Konen, Koshev, and Sinha, and and there's a there's another proof uh, by Kozanovic, Shi, and Teichner. So there's so we have a Vasiliev invariant of degree n, uh, which is defined, uh, which is defined over the integers, right? Uh, and so the there was a sort of conjecture, um, which which that which says that this could be the universal invariant uh, uh, over the integers. Uh, this evaluation map. Okay, which is to say. That the map from the n equivalence classes to T n plus one is is a group isomorphism. Uh, so some evidence for this: the, well, the case n equals one is is easy to prove. So both sides are very trivial. Um, uh, n equals two, um, you can compute the the um, the T three of of knots. You can compute isotopic classes of of this. And you'll find there's a Z, uh, and, and then you have to we have to show that the the value of the trefoil. Remember, I said that the degree two invariants they are determined by their value on the trefoil. So you have to show that the value, the value of this evaluation map on the trefoil is 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 one. 
So it sort of generates all the other invariants of uh, degree two. And this was done by Bodney, Conan, uh, Scannell, and Sinha, which also gave an interpretation of geometric interpretation of this evaluation map. Okay, so this is evidence in the first two cases. Uh, and there are also some rational results of Volich in this thesis, uh, which are a little different, but they are sort of very related to this. Okay, so then um, we have the following. So if we're trying to prove that the invariant is universal, uh, we can um, reduce this to a question about uh, the spectral sequence that we get from this tower, from the Good Willie Tower. Uh, and um, Kozanovic proves that if you take if you take this tower and if you look at the the diagonal, uh, if the if the tower collapses on the E two page along this diagonal, then then the conjecture holds, uh, and vice versa. Okay, so it it translates this question of um, universality just into a question of the the, the the spectral sequence and the collapse of the spectral sequence at the E two page. Uh, and and it's it's also this is also the case if if you tensor with with any torsion free ring, uh, and I will be interested mostly in in these three. So the the integers localized at p, uh, the p-adic integers or the rational numbers. So here I have yeah here I have a for, here I have how the spectral sequence looks like uh, on the diagonal. So it starts. So this is just the spectral sequence for for a tower of vibrations. Okay, so it starts with the with the homotopy groups of the homotopy fibers, the layers. So on the on the diagonal, that's just the isotopy classes of of those layers, uh, and it tries to compute the 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 associated grid. So the the kernel of the map um, of um, pi zeros, right? And the 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 one observation here is that this E2 page on, on the diagonal, this is actually, this was identified by, by Conant um, with the algebra, which, with the algebra of core diagrams that we talked in the beginning, uh, S minus one, there's a shift here. Um, so, so, if, so if you have collapse, all these maps are isomorphisms and, and, and that's, that gives you what you expect. And so this is our main theorem. So we use basically we we use this result of uh, of Danica Kozanovic, uh, and we 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 prove that if you take a prime p uh, and you look at the evaluation map, um, then this evaluation map is a universal uh, Vasilev invariant of degree n uh, p locally. So when you when you when you take the the um, when you tensor with the localized with the integers localized at p, uh, and this is not, but this is not true always, but it's true in this range. So it's true whenever n is uh, smaller or equal than p plus one. Okay, you mean that you, you don't know if it is true always? Uh, we don't know that it is true always. No, I mean the conjecture would be that it would be always true, right? But uh, we don't know. I mean, we can say we can say sort of uh, we can we can say we can say some a little bit better than this. Uh, we can say that um, if you take any n, we can tell you how many differentials we don't know, or how many differentials you would have to uh, to check. Um, uh, like for example, roughly if you look at in the range from p plus one to to uh, I think two two p plus one, then you have to check another differential. Uh, and then so on and so on and so forth. But there's some differentials that we cannot discard as being zero. Uh, and this will, I will maybe, we'll, we'll see a little bit where that comes from. Okay, thank you. Um, and the second point is that um, there is well all the extension problems you you have uh, you can solve um, so you get this um, this p local uh, isomorphism between the um, the n plus one uh, 
space in the tower and 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 the algebra and the direct sum of the algebras of chord items. Okay, just like just like in in Konsevich's theorem, rationally. Actually, we can also deduce. Um, we can also deduce rationally. We can get full collapse. We can deduce from this theorem the rational theorem of Konsevich, um, um, and then there is full there is full collapse in that case, and uh, and that's this is the the decomposition that that we had before. Okay. Okay. So I want to tell a little bit about what goes into. Um, this collapse uh, result. Um, so the 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 um, the point, the starting point is that that we used was a connection between the tower uh, and the disk will device tower and the little disk operand. So I will do uh, now from now on the the fact that we're looking at knots in D three is not so important. Uh, so I will just take any D uh, and I'll, I'll just rename K to be the space of long knots from D1 uh, to this higher, possibly higher uh, dimensional disk, which are still standard near the boundary. Okay. Um, and there is, there is a homotopy fiber sequence like this. Uh, let me try to explain this. So uh, the first map here the first map is just well, the map we saw before is just a derivative map. You can think of it as the derivative map, right? It's like the the this is T1. Uh, so that's just um, the, the the map on the tower. Uh, the second the second map. Uh, first, so ED here. Uh, that's I mean the little disks operat, the the little D disks. Uh, operate. Okay, I, I'm assuming people know, but if if someone wants me to say what what they are, you can raise your hand. Uh, and uh, so the, here I'm taking derived maps from E1 to ED. Um, and so what is this map here from the sphere to these maps of operates? Well, I, I will do a sort of. Uh, a bit imprecise uh, definition, but um, the idea is well. You can think you can think of the d minus one sphere uh, just as uh, the the space of linear injections uh, from R one to R d, right? Just uh, linear maps. Um, and if you take a linear map of R one in R d, uh, and you take a few, you, and you take a bunch of intervals. In 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 R one, then you get a bunch of intervals in R d, uh, which you can sort of thicken them a little bit, uh, and view them as little balls in in R d, uh, and this is roughly how the map goes. Okay, so it's 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 essentially um, uh, evaluation as well. So you 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 evaluate your your linear map on little on little intervals. Um, so there are ways to make this more precise by maybe changing a little bit your your point of view on the little disk operat, but uh, but the idea essentially is this: it boils down to this. Uh, and and this map is a homotopy fiber sequence. Well, the first thing is if you take if you take the the if you take a knot uh, and then you take its derivative and then you forget this linear part and you just look at the sort of uh, configuration space part, the operatic part. Uh, this map will be null homotopic, uh, and it's essentially it's well it's essentially what essentially what's called the the Alexander trick. So you can take your knot and you cannot you cannot really make your knot null homotopic uh, smoothly. But if you if you uh, you just think of it topologically, you can make the you can make the 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 knot uh, null homotopic. You can just sort of pull the knot, uh, and that's a cont continuous deformation to the knot. So that gives you that gives you this homotopy of uh, of the composition uh, like this. It's just pulling, uh, and so you, you you this is how this fiber sequence comes comes about. And well, you have to show that it's a homotopy fiber sequence. That's uh, that's hard work, but um, um, it's roughly how it goes. 
and this is uh, Dwyer Hess, Tuchin, and myself, and uh, Michael Weiss. Um, right, and there is there is another uh, step you can do here, which is uh, that you can realize that there is a map going this way, uh, which is essentially by restricting to two point uh, to to uh, to to uh, this of cardinality two. So two point configurations. You take your your if you take your map of operats uh, and you restrict to cardinality two, you have essentially uh, you have essentially a point in the sphere. You have essentially a linear map from R one to R D because linear maps are determined by from R one to R D are determined by sort of where they map two points. Um, so you get you get to map this way. Um, uh, and this composition here is the identity. So if you go this way, this is homotopic to the identity. So it's just sort of by formal reasons, uh, you can you can deal, you can loop it once more, uh, and you find that the t infinity of k is this twofold loop space of the of the restriction map. So this is restriction to cardinality two, or arity two. We should say arity two. Okay, so uh, and more generally, if you take if you take any s, um, you can describe the kth space in the tower as the homotopy fiber of the of this map, which takes so so this means that you tr you restrict or you truncate at uh, at ca cardinality at arity s. So you look at all your operands and you truncate all the operations above. Uh, S. Um, right. So, so then you you will see like that the, that the the second one, the second stage, the second um, space in the tower will be contractible. Um, well, because that was you were taking the homotopy fiber of a restriction to arity two, uh, and the the higher layers they're essentially uh, given by a twofold. Um, loop space of the homotopy fiber of the restriction map from S to S minus one. Uh, and you compute this um, uh, and you and you will find that um, that this is given by this loop space here. Uh, so that's an S minus one for loop space on uh, a wedge of S D minus one spheres. Um, so there's s minus one of those, and there's this tilde here, which which just means that um, we are looking at um, uh, sort of a homotopy fiber, or like a homotopy fiber of the map from the big wedge to all the smaller wedges where you collapse some of these um, uh, spheres. Um, so, but that's not so important now. Uh, so you'll find that the one page looks like looks like this, the um, this homotopy fiber, and it looks like this this homotopy groups roughly the homotopy groups of a of a wedge of spheres. Uh, and we understand this this homotopy groups um, of wedges of spheres by by the Hilton Milner theorem. There is given by sort of whitehead products, and rationally um, it's it's even better. Everything is free. The free graded al uh, Lie algebra and uh, and all the homotopy groups are concentrated in these degrees n d minus one plus one, okay, which are sort of iterated uh, whitehead products of um, the inclusions of a sphere into this big uh, wedge. Okay, so um, I I want to so we want to understand this spectral sequence here uh, when we look at the prime. Okay, when 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 we localize at p, so let's um, fix a prime p, um, and let me recall um, the following. So if you take a group G, uh, you can look at its uh, p completion, uh, and well, this p completion is 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 uh, by definition the limit of all its uh, p quotients. Um, so, so you're replacing G by sort of all its finite p quotients, or the limit of all its finite p quotients. So, for example, an example of such is the p completion uh, of the integers, which is the p adic integers. 
Um, and if you take a finitely generated abelian group, then the p-completion is just given by uh, um, taking, taking the tensor with, with the p-adic integers. Um, and there is there is a space version of this construction, uh, which is uh, due to Sullivan, um, which which says that if you take a nice which take a nice enough space, um, uh, there is a there is a you can construct another space um, um, with a map with a universal map uh, from 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 X, which induces the p-completion on homotopy groups. Okay, so so in particular, if this nice space, well, if you say it's a, it's a simply connected uh, space and all the homotopy groups are finitely generated, then the effect this has on the homotopy groups of X is just tensoring them with the p -addicts. Um And if you don't, if you don't, if you are not uh, very happy with this and you're happy with 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 the uh, FP localization, homology localization, this also agrees with the homology localization. Uh, for at least for nice for nice enough spaces. Uh, so what's the strategy? Um, the, so the strategy is uh, to replace the little disk operand by by its p completion, uh, which means that you take the little disk operand and that's an operand in spaces, uh, and then you just apply p completion to each of these spaces. Okay, so you get another operand, uh, and this technological marvel here. Uh, it was sort of to remind me that there are sort of higher structures at play here, uh, because the 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 p completion is not it will not preserve products uh, strictly. Um, it will preserve products only up to homotopy. So what you get here is not really a, it's not really a strict operand, but it's something more like an infinity operand. Uh, and uh, well, we like to think of it as something like a dendroidal. Uh, object, um, the dendroidal space or dendroidal pro object uh, in the sense of Chizinski and Mordek. Um, so the effect is, we take the, the this opera we p completed and we we get uh, we get a new tower, okay, which looks like the the previous one, but now everything inside is p completed, uh, and the effect is the effect is that the homotopy groups of this new tower. Are just given by the the homotopy groups of the previous tower, but now tensored with with ZP, because everything is finitely generated a billion. So we're just re really looking at the tensor product. Okay, and so the spec and the spectral sequence as well is just the previous one uh, tensored with with um, the p-adic integers. Uh, so what's the point of all of this? Well, well, first we wanted to to look at uh, a prime p. Uh, we're closer. Uh, but very importantly, what, what we gain is that this, this p completion of the little disk operand has many, many interesting automorphisms. Uh, and we want to try to use these automorphisms um, uh, in a second. So let me try to maybe very briefly explain to you uh, where these automorphisms, where, this, where all of these automorphisms come from. So, and let me go back to, let me take the case D equals two. So we're looking at uh, the little two disks operand. Uh, and I'm uh, looking in in uh, array T two of this to this uh, opera, uh, and the space of um, in the space is just the space the configuration space of two points in C, right? Or R two. Um, but uh, the space the space of configurations of two points in C, well, that's that's the the complex points is the uh, underlying complex manifold. Of an algebraic variety, which is which is defined over Q, uh, and and so if you want to calculate the 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 completion of the fundamental group uh, of this manifold of this complex manifold, uh, and here I mean here okay, I mean completion, uh, I mean th this here means not the p completion but the profinite completion where I look at I don't fix a prime but I look at uh, all primes, so I look at all, all the finite um, quotients, I take the limit of all the finite quotients of the of, of my group. Uh, and there's there's uh, the theorem in, in, um, um, uh, which says that the, this profile completion of the fundamental group of this complex manifold is given by some et al fundamental group um, 
uh, of, of the base change of this variety X to, to Q bar. Okay, um, and, but in the, this, the point is that this, this fundamental group here, so by sort of the way that it's constructed, it has an action of the, of the absolute Galois group uh, of the rational numbers. So you get an action of the absolute Galois uh, uh, group on the completion of the fundamental group of, of this configuration space of two points, which is just a circle. Okay, so this is just, this is just a completion uh, of the circle. Uh, and this map has a name uh, and it's, it's the cyclotomic character. It coincides with, it's called the cyclotomic character. Um, so there is a theorem by, by Geoffroy Aurel um, and there's there sort of related versions of this uh, by Fresse uh, and this both these theorems sort of build on work of ideas of Drinfeld, uh, which says that this action on the two point config on the two point configuration space uh, it extends to an action on the whole um, little two disks operad. Um, so at each level for each config for each arity, uh, this is it's it's not um, it's not a big deal. It's sort of the same the same thing as happens here. Everything comes from algebraic ge uh, geometry, so you have all these actions on each individual arity. But what they show is that everything is compatible with the operatic structure. So you get you get an action in an operatic action uh, of the absolute Galois group. Okay, and if you restrict to two points. Then, then you get uh, exactly the cyclotomic uh, character map. So you get a lot of a lot of um, um, you, you get a lot of automorphisms of, of the uh, little little two disks operat once you once you p complete it. Um, then, do you want to? Well, we want to sort of um, build automorphisms on the little uh, d or d plus two operat from the little two disks operat, uh, and what we do is we use this sort of additivity theorem. Uh, the star here again is means there are higher structures involved. So, I mean, I will not really spend too much time on this, but there, there's um, uh, there's a additivity theorem which works uh, once you complete. Uh, everything so you can express the 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 p completion of the little d plus two disks operat as a sort of funny tensor pro uh, product of the two p completions, um, and and so uh, and so you can put you can put this this Galois action that we from from the theorem above on the e two factor and here just act trivially. Uh, and you so you get a, you get an action on the d plus two um, uh, little disk operat, and then from there you can you can get an action on the on the tower, and you get an action on the spectral sequence. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about um, what this action um, looks like. So the the following uh, definition is important. So if I have uh, a ZP module. Uh, and I have a Galois action on this CPU module. Um, I say that this Galois action is cyclotomic of weight M if it acts by multiplication by the, the, the cyclotomic character to the power of M. Okay, so it factors through the cyclotomic character and, and it's just multiplication by M, by, by the power of M. Uh, and if you take two ZP modules and you both of them have actions of the the the, uh, the Galois group, and, and these actions are cyclotomic, so of weight m and weight n, uh, then you can see that this action that this homomorphism has to be zero uh, if the difference between these these two weights is not it's not a multiple of p minus one. Okay, there's sort of a um, I don't know, dissonance. Uh, so, so with this, uh, the sort of technical um, result that we prove about the spectral sequence, 
um, is that the, the differential uh, will have to vanish p locally if the following two conditions are, are they hold. So the first one is this one, um, which is which is well very reminiscent of the, the this proposition which is had before, uh, and the second one is this uh, range of um, uh, t's. Um, I was going to sketch the proof, but I, I think I I, I I don't. Well, the, 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 so the point is that this this um, you can compute the, the action. Uh, you can compute the action on the 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 E one page, and because you understand well, you, you understand these homotopy groups uh, rationally. You can and and you know that they are concentrated in certain levels. Uh, you have to find, you have to check that the action is cyclotomic um, on those levels, um, and uh, and then by the proposition above, whenever you have a um, their difference is not a multiple of p minus one. Uh, then you know that the things are the differentials have to be zero. So a lot of differentials will have to be zero, at least in that range where you understand the homotopy groups very well. Okay. Um, so let me make a few uh, uh, co corollaries. So the first one is the, the the main theorem. So we get the collapse of the spectral sequence at the e one uh, at the Ito page uh, along the diagonal uh, in this range. Um, that just comes it comes directly from the theorem just just below, just above. Uh, another uh, corollary is um, using the the estimates of embedding calculus. So this this is for d uh, at least four. Uh, this tower, the Gulli Levi's tower, converges. So t infinity is uh, weakly equivalent to the space of of knots. So you can you can uh, combine these two. Uh, um, these two theorems to to have a computation of of the the, the homotopy groups um, uh, p locally um, um, from the from the e two page. Everything collapses on this range. Everything collapses at the e two page. Um, Uh, and, and there's also a similar uh, spectral sequence that computes the homology, uh, and the results are, are are they are similar. The conclusions are similar, but but they are stronger because um, because the rational homology of because the homology of these configuration spaces or this wedge of spheres is much simpler than than the homotopy. Um, uh, the other right, the other corollary is uh, uh, rationally. So if you look at the spectral sequence, uh, it will collapse over the rationals uh, at the E2 page uh, whenever D is, is at least three, um, which which you can deduce from you, you can deduce from the from the from the collapse of the from from this vanishing of these differentials um, and. So this was originally due to Arona, Lambert, Svolich, and, and Turchin, uh, and their proof it, it it relies on the on the formality, relative formality of the little disk operat, uh, and we're not really using this directly, the the formality of the little disk operat, but this is not really uh, uh, it's not a coincidence. Um, so um, by work of uh, Joana, Sirici, and, and Jofa. Um, the the fact that these Galois actions exist, um, it implies the formality of the little disks operad, uh, at least partially in, in characteristic p and 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 sort of uh, this this these ideas of using Galois actions to prove formality and um, um, they they sort of they well we were sort of building on 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 this on this work and it's very much related so that was sort of probably the starting point of this. Um, right. I want to finish with with just a couple of, of questions. Uh, well, one of them is what happens in in higher dimensions uh, if we look at um, at knots in higher dimensions. So the rational case has been studied very much uh, um, uh, recently. Um, so there are results by Arun and Turchin, uh, and there's um, 
sort of a better range and improve results by Fresa, Tulchin, and uh, Vilvahar. Um, and well, we wonder if you can use these Galois actions to, to get results at the prime P as well. Um, something we were thinking about. And also, um, so this, and you can, you can play similar games if you look at embeddings of some manifolds in, in RN, because essentially what you're using is, you're still working with the little disks opera in, in some sense. So you can still uh, try to use these actions to, to, to prove collapse results. Um, something which goes in a, this, a slightly different direction is not so operatic anymore. Uh, is if you look if you replace the target by some something else, uh, and something we're recently thinking about is what happens if you look at uh, say long knots in a complex manifold times d1, um, uh, and this these are two sort of um, possible with with forwards the possible questions uh, about this these actions. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much for this nice talk. Is there any question for Pedro? Um, can I ask a- Yes, yeah, sure, Marcy. So Pedro, uh, the action um, of the absolute Gawa group on the higher ED, when you had it, um, higher dimensional little disks when you had it going from E2 and then I, this box product. Mm -hmm. Is this is this complicated or is this just a universal property kind of argument or something? Is, is it easy to see how it, how the absolute, how it acts via the, sorry, how the action is compatible with the box product? Yeah, well, I mean, the answer should be, the answer uh, is it should be easy. Um, <laughs> Uh, it should be easy, but it's not so easy. I mean, at least not for me. Uh, so the problem is that the usual, if you take the usual borman fock tensor product, um, well, there's two problems. Uh, uh, one is, well, one is you would like to define this borman fock tensor product for things that are like infinity operads in pro, in pro spaces, say. Uh, and, and the second thing is you would like to understand this what this what the tensor product does on inarity two because that's sort of the that's where this uh, uh, cyclotomic uh, part comes comes in uh, and I I don't know how to do this with the with the sort of usual definitions or the infinity operatic definitions of the Borman fock tensor product but there is this other tensor product uh, which which is this box product. Um, that I that I uh, defined with 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 Michael Michael Weiss uh, in a, in a in a slightly different context, um, and and we we know that those two we know that the, this this box product and the Borman fock tensor product they agree for the little disks operat. Uh, it's actually a conjecture. Uh, we, we don't know. Uh, we think it's true, but we don't know that they agree uh, more generally. Uh, and with this with this box product, we can show that everything works fine. So we can we can, uh, for example, the completion the, the box product of the completion uh, is the completion of the box product, uh, and we can understand this this box product in in RT two. Uh, so so where that's where that comes from. Uh, okay, so. I'm glad to know it's not easy because I couldn't understand. <laughs> so, thank you. Great yeah. talk, by the way. This is true. Is there any other question? Feel free, of course. I, I wanted to ask you, can you remind me, uh, how about T infinity of K? Is it known or conjectured to be group completion of the K? Yeah, I, I think it is. I think it's, yeah, that's something I... I think uh, that's not true uh, that it's the group completion. Uh, I, yeah, I had a discussion once with uh, Peter Tushner and he told me this is not true. Uh, I think the group completion of the of K that's been studied by uh, I think Mostovoy and the, uh, no, so does someone know? Sakai, I think. Sakai. Sakai? Is it Sakai? I think so. 
Okay, so the group completion has been studied. There is a description of the group completion of K, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't coincide with uh, T infinity. <coughs> Any other questions? Yes, I have one uh, very similar to the first one, actually. But mm -hmm. I, I was wondering if there is uh, some even easy example uh, in which one can see this uh, Galois action uh, geometrically, like interpreting the spectral sequence, uh, as we said, as the homotopy fiber of uh, the tower spaces. Uh, uh, layers, uh, yeah, well, or on the algebra or of true diagrams. I don't know. Mm. Well, okay, well, that's yeah. I'm not sure I have a good answer, but the, the actually, I mean, so I mean, I'm not sure what you mean by geometric, but uh, you know, I like, mean, yeah, the, I mean, the, yeah, 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 sorry, I mean, the the, the fact that this Galois action exists, like, even for uh. Uh, configuration of two points. I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you say this is a geometric action, uh, then actually the, um, so the differentials that we can show vanish, uh, we can show they vanish because they essentially act, uh, they essentially, the, the action is essentially given by, by this. It's sort of, yeah. it's generated by two point configurations. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and, and that's, that's essentially the part we can understand. It's so this cyclotomic part, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what you if you have something deeper in mind. No, no, it's it's okay. It's it's like uh, maybe it's uh, 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 yeah. No, I, I mean, I if I ever am not like an explicit knot and I mean the Galwa group is really the absolute it's it's really big say I can't see how we can twist uh, in so much ways no. the, no, the knot uh, no, yeah okay neither. but for me I mean this is not really I, I don't see this as a geometric thing in that sense um, okay I mean that's why that's why it's somehow so rich I think because if you take yeah for if you take the automorphisms of of the little two disks operad or little uh, n disks operad, then there's very few of them. Uh, okay, uh, so it's the completion. Sort of, well, yeah, it's the completion that sort of makes this explode in some sense. Okay, okay. Uh, so we can see just this uh, as at an algebraic level. As, okay. Well, that's. See. I mean, I don't know if Shufa has a better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's clear. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Free. I have a question. Oh, hi, Pedro. Uh, hi, Pedro. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, your main result, uh, you said that you didn't know whether uh, that bound uh, on the prime could be improved. Uh, yes. Then you said that uh, your main result is related to this formality result uh, of the little this operat by CDC and Gorel, right? Yeah. yeah. Now the question is, uh, so that that uh, formality result has also a bound on the prime p? On right, the prime? it does. Yeah, it does. And yeah. so in that case, uh, is it known whether that uh, that bound can be improved? Uh, I mean, can be removed? No, actually, I, for the formality, there is a bound and that bound cannot be improved. The oh, that, that, cannot. Similar, that cannot be improved, yes. Um, yeah. Okay, so may maybe that's a hint that uh, it cannot uh, be improved in this case uh, either, right? Or, or... Well, not f well, not for me. Uh, the, uh... No, okay. Okay, so uh, they are not, not so related. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't... Well, that's not clear for me. Uh, uh, but that's the honest answer. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Good to be honest. Any other question? You can, and huh? we have time. If 
not. I think we can thank Pedro again for the, this nice answers.